I've always been tremendously interested in what people mean by the word I because it comes out in curious lapses of speech we don't say I am a body we say I have a body and somehow we don't seem to identify ourselves with all of ourselves we say sort of my feet my hands my teeth as if they were something somehow outside me and as far as I can make out most people feel that they are something or other about halfway between the ears and a little way behind the eyes inside the head that is what you call the ego that's not what you are at all because it gives you the idea that you're a chauffeur inside your own body as if your body were an automobile and you are the chauffeur principle inside it but you feel caught in a trap because your body is kind of a mess it gets sick tired hurts and eventually wears out and dies and you feel caught in the thing because you feel different from it and you feel the world outside your body is an awful trap it's full of stupid people who are sometimes nice to you but mostly aren't because they're all out for themselves like you are and the rest of it aside from people is absolutely dumb animals plants mere vegetables rocks and finally behind the whole thing blazing centers of radioactivity called stars and out there where there's no air there's no place for a person to live and so we have come to feel ourselves as confronted with a world that doesn't give a damn about us in music one doesn't make the end of a composition the point of the composition. If that were so, the best conductors would be those who played faster. <laughs> and there would be composers who wrote only finales. <laughs> People go to concerts just to hear one crashing chord, because that's the end. <laughs> but we don't see that as uh, something brought by our education into our everyday conduct. We've got a system of schooling which gives a completely different impression. It's all graded. And what we do is we put the child into the corridor of this grade system with a kind of, come on, kitty, kitty, kitty. And yeah, you go to kindergarten, you know. And that's a great thing because when you finish that, you'll get into first grade. And then come on, first grade leads to second grade and so on. And then you get out of grade school, you've got high school. And it's revving up, the thing is coming. Then you're going to go to college. And by Joe, then you get into graduate school, and when you're through with graduate school, you go out to join the world. And then you get into some racket where you're selling insurance. And they've got that quota to make. And you're going to make that. And all the time, this thing is coming. It's coming. It's coming. That great thing, the, the success you're working for. Then when you wake up one day about 40 years old, you say, my God, I've arrived. <laughs> I'm there. And you don't feel very different from what you always felt. And there's a slight letdown because you feel there's a hoax. And there was a hoax. A dreadful hoax. They made you miss everything. And we thought of life by analogy with a journey, with a pilgrimage, which had a serious purpose at the end. And the thing was to get to that end. Success or whatever it is, or maybe heaven after you're dead. But we missed the point the whole way along. It was a musical thing and you were supposed to sing or to dance while the music was being played.